election, in the presence of your loss or your winnings, we raise a hallelujah no matter what. And I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemy. I raise a Oh 
going to sing a little louder. Is that all right? You sing that, that part of it, and then I'll sing the rest. Sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder, louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder, my weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder, heaven comes to fight. Sing it now. Good. In the presence of
because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise.
and greatly to be praised, oh God. We bless you, Lord, this morning. We worship you because of who you are, Lord. Not because of all the things that you have done or all the things that you're going to do, Lord, but because of who you are. Father, we bless your name. Alright, I'm going to play this little tune. I want you guys to go around and get some of the fist bump. Look at them in the eye. I know, you know, with all the social distancing and stuff, so, but this is a church, right? Go ahead, go ahead and uh, greet somebody in the name of Jesus.
Lord, we are so thankful that you've given us this wonderful nation under God. And Lord, we pray that the soul of America continues to be under God. We pray for our nation that justice will prevail and that we will be a nation of liberty and of justice for all. We are thankful, Lord. Thank you so much. And may today's message be an inspiration to us all, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. That's the only welcome I heard on Pastor Bill. I want to get on TV. You know what? I just want to thank you, Layton, for always supporting me. Most of you know I don't have Layton's dad anymore. No, come here. I don't have his dad. But he's been supporting me and helped me through this whole political process because I have no idea what's going on. You all know that I spent many years in prison. I never voted until this time. And I had so many questions, I probably was driving them nuts. But I thank him, and there's some other ones, uh, Jeff Schlemming, some that helped me with all the political stuff and understanding what was going on. So I just want to thank you, everybody, for being there for me. That's a fist pump. Amen. Hey, let's take this. <clears throat> so. I had a message for today. It was going to be on tithing. But after all the stuff that was going on, I didn't feel like tithing would have been appropriate for today. So, I was praying yesterday about noon. And I asked God, I said, what do I need to tell these people? What do I need to tell my brothers and sisters in Christ? What do I need to share with them right now? And he says, encourage them. To encourage you all. And yesterday, you know, I had my grandkids at the house, which was kind of hard to concentrate because they're 10 and 11, and they're going mad. And uh, <laughs> as I was working, they were running around, and they wanted me to play, so I played, and then I went back, and, but the Lord gave me a sermon today, and uh, and I just hope that uh, it will reach all of you, especially in this time, uh, through this election, on all, all the stuff that's happening on TV. And today I called it, bow if you want to. Bow if you want to. But let me say this to every person that's here, and who are all, all with us here that's streaming or whether you're here in person, I can tell you that I know what kind of trials you're going through today. I don't know what issues you're dealing with, and I don't know what hostilities you're facing through this time of trouble, but I have something to tell all of you, and that is, after all this is over, after this time has passed over, once this dark cloud has passed through, victory will be yours. Victory will be ours. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Where's my people at? Amen. Yeah, there we go. Amen. It will be just like a song that I heard by John P. Key. I think his name is K-E-E. Listen to these lyrics. I made it out. I made it out all right. I'm not going to sing it. Thank you because you didn't leave me nor forsake me. Thank you because you didn't let my enemies take me. I'm still in the fight because I made it out all right. Truth of the matter, these days we're dealing with problems and issues that we never had to face before. In fact, some of the disasters that are coming will, will seem kind of unfamiliar to us. Even the cry of some of the saints, our brothers and sisters in the churches, are trying to figure out how we're going to make it through this storm. How we're going to make it through this time in 2020, which has been one of the craziest years of them all. But today I'm here to tell everybody, every blood-bought Christian who's here today or watching this stream that you need to be giving God praise today. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Why? Why, after all this virus stuff and all the elections, the way it's going, and all the propositions and all the things happening, why? There was another song that said, millions didn't make it, but I was one of, I was the ones who did. I was one of the ones who made it through the pitfalls. I was one of the ones who made it through the storm and the rain. I was one of the ones who made it through the fire and all the tricky stairs. There were others that never made it to the fire. And there are others that died in the fire. But I am alive today to tell all of you that I made it out. And not only did I make it out, but I made it out all right. Amen? Amen. Some great songs. I'm going to be using the scripture out of Daniel chapter 3 today because in this passage, I believe that we have all heard at some point in your life, you know the story of the three Hebrew boys 
that had Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whose original Jewish names were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And I've got to say that this story in God's holy word is real and it's true. It's not a fairy tale. And I believe we need to read about these young boys whose faith could not be shaken. And this awesome story that was written by God, because most think it's written by men, what happened was this. King Nebuchadnezzar is having some male ego issues. In chapter 2 of the same book of Daniel, Daniel interpreted a dream that the king had about a great image, a great statue that was destroyed. And Daniel told the king that he, Nebuchadnezzar, was the head of that statue, which was made of gold. But Nebuchadnezzar did, uh, decided he wasn't satisfied with just the head of that statue. He wanted to be the entire statue. So therefore, King Nebuchadnezzar had an image built, a huge image, about 90 feet tall and 9 feet wide. Nebuchadnezzar then got all the political leaders together and made a decree that he wanted carried out. He said, whenever the music plays, everyone is to bow down and worship this great image. Can you imagine that? This morning, we worship God. We bow down to God, our God, the God, the one and only true God in Amen. worship. And he is the one that we only bow to, no one else. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, if you remember, when Daniel interpreted the king's Dream Nebuchadnezzar was so pleased that he made Daniel the governor of Babylon. And Daniel in return asked that his friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be promoted as well. And that request was granted. So these young men, in essence, were now in good standards with the king. But understand this, they were also foreigners in this land. So they had what we call today some haters. There were some people that were displeased with them because they found favor in the eyes of the king. And you all know that there are some people like that today because you find favors in the eyes of others. Some will dislike you, some will hate you, and they will plot against you. Some might not like, like the decisions that you've made and the reason that you've made them, but they will plot against you. They will want to argue with you. They will want to hate you. These boys found favor in the eyes of the king, but now there's a problem. These young men were servants of the one true God, and they knew that according to the law of Moses, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. And they knew the orders of the king, but they refused to bow. And let me just throw this in as a little side note. And that side note is this. If you know who your God is, whenever you know who the true king of kings is, you don't have to bow down to the imposter who thinks that they are the king. We know who the one true king is. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. When the Lord is your guide, you don't have to jump through hoops and hide under the radar. In other words, you don't have to bow down to anyone. Not, no one, no one. Look what happened with these two who were haters when they found out that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow at the demands of the king's music. They went to the king and decided to be tattletales. Now, in my older days, I would have called them something else. I would have used a different word. But today, tattletales is cool. They told and said the king to the king, these young men that you promoted, they were not abiding by the rule that exists today that you made. They went to the king and said, Sir, didn't you say that when the music plays, everyone is supposed to bow down and worship your image? Well, some of those young boys that you chose aren't abiding by the rules. They're not bowing. I understand King Nebuchadnezzar wasn't one to be embarrassed, especially not in front of his political buddies, and surely not by these guys that he considered to be his friends now. The record shows that he tried to give them a chance to explain. He said, bring them to me. He asked them, did you not hear the command that I gave? And he asked them, what is it? What is this that I hear about you not bowing? I know that this cannot be true. He tells the boy, it's simple. You're going to bow or you're going to burn. Then who is this God that will deliver you? How many times have you been in those predicaments? You either need to bow or burn. You know, we're Christians living in a world today, living in a time where it's hardest right now. It's the worst time ever. Things are not going to probably get better. But you know what? Who are you going to bow to? Who is your God? I know who my God is. I have victory in Jesus. But if you remember the story, they told the king, look, king, we know your orders. 
And we heard the music play, but we're not going to bow. In fact, we're not even going to answer your questions because we know that our God is able to deliver us. But, but even if he doesn't, we're not going to bow down to worship your God. Amen. How many times have you been in those predicaments? Even if he doesn't save us, even if he doesn't take care of our situation, are you still going to bow down to our God and nothing else? The devil tries many times to sidetrack us with different things to make it easier. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do this. Just walk away from your God for a little while. King Nebuchadnezzar in all of his fury demanded that the furnace be heated as hot as possible. So when you think it's pretty hot what you're dealing with, this was hot. As hot as possible and to toss the boys in there. It said that the furnace was so hot that even the guards that tossed them in got burned. So this is where, at, where we're at in the text today. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are in the fiery furnace. The king and his political guys are all standing there watching. The king decided to look into the mouth of the furnace and he sees something strange. Imagine if he wore glasses. He probably would have had to take them off and clean them up a little bit just to make sure what he was seeing was real. He said to all of his guests, didn't we tie all three of these men up and throw them into the fire? And somebody said, yes, O okay. king. There were three, but the king said, yet yeah, I see four walking around in the fire. Check this out, church. There will be times when we find ourselves in some heated situations. It might be about your faith. It might be about what you believe in. It might be who you voted for. But there will be, come a point in your life where you have to make a decision. Either you're going to trust God or you're going to trust man. And I will tell you this. I know that trusting God and walking with God isn't always a popular decision. Especially now. But I do know it's the right decision. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but there are times when I was in the, some heated situations that I didn't know how to handle. And somehow, someway, whenever I'm in the midst of that fire... God was always in that fire with me. Amen. He pulled me through. These young men made the decision to go into a furnace. You know, can you imagine today, right now, us who are in here, you are at home. You're sitting there, and all of a sudden your door gets break, broken in, and they have a fire, a furnace waiting for you to throw you into the fire. Are you still going to claim that you are a Christian? Are you still going to claim that we only have one God? What if they say you have one chance you can still be alive? These young men made the decision to go in the furnace. In fact, they embraced it. They could, could have bowed. They could have said there were thousands of people out there in the crowd. Who was going to see us bow? We can bow to save our lives. Some of you might say, God knows my heart. But how many of you know that God really knows the heart? You know, what you're feeling here in your heart, he knows. We can't lie to God. But how many of you really know, brothers and sisters, there are times when you just have to trust God and get in the fire? Yeah, I know. It can get pretty hot, right? It's been heated hotter than ever before this year, but you've got to trust the maker. You need to trust God. And I will tell you this, if God brings you to it, he can bring you through it. Amen? Amen. Remember that when you walk out of here today. If God brings you to it, he can bring you through it. And watch this. Going in the fire means you may lose some family and friends. But that's what the fire is all about. When things get heated, dead weight starts to fall off. Who needs negativity anyway? Not only will you walk into the fire sometimes, but there are times that God will place you in the fire. But know this. When God places you in the fire, it's not to harm you. It's to make you better. It's to make you more of a man of a God, more of a man of God, more of a woman of God, more of a child of God. Malachi 3, 3 says, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. Amen. In order to produce the purest form of silver and gold, the refiner has to leave the precious metal in the furnace, and while it's in the fire, all the impurities are falling off, 
And as the untrained eye, it may look like the silver or gold is ready to come out, but the refiner knows better than we do. At just the right moment, not a second sooner, he pulls it out of the fire. You see? The refiner knows it's ready because he can see his reflection in it. This is what God does with us. He allows us to go through the fire. He allows us to go through the pruning process. He allows us to shed all the impurities. And at just the right precise time, when he can look at us and see his reflection, then he'll pull us out. Amen? I know it seems a little unfair. Why do we have to go through this? Why do I have to deal with all that I've been dealing with this year, Lord? I've been following you. I've been going to church. I've been paying my tithes. I've been doing everything I'm supposed to do. Isn't there a better way for you to train me without going through all this fire? I know many of you here, many of you who are watching, cried out many nights, why, God? Why? You took my mom way too soon. God, you took my dad away. God, you took my child away. My child hadn't even begun to live yet. God, you took the best job I ever had. God, they're about to foreclose on my house. God, my medical bills have medical bills. God, my sickness has sickness. How long? How long will I deal with this decision of this election? God, how much longer do I have to stay in this fiery furnace? God, I've taken out all I can take. But God says, not yet. I can't see my reflection yet. I can hear somebody say, well, I'm just going to give up. Maybe some of you are here. I can't do it anymore. But I will tell you all here today, don't give up. Don't give up, saints. Know that you're just like the young men in this chapter. You're not alone. Watch this. Three of the men went in there, went in there all tied up and bound. But while they were in there, they began to praise God. They began to praise God. How many of you still know that when the praises go up, blessings come down? Amen. When the Amen. praises go up, healing comes down. Amen. When the praises go up, deliverance comes down. Amen. When the praises go up, miracles come down. When praises go up, the enemy will fall. While in the fiery furnace, tied and bound, the fire heated seven times hotter than it's ever been before. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego started to praise the Most High God, and the angel of the Lord joined them in worship. That's why the word of God says, I will never leave you or forsake you. Somebody's got to thank God for the fire. Amen? Amen. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, I thank God for the fire. I thank God. Come on, I thank God for the fire. Amen. Amen. I know that we're going to come out of this. I know we're all coming out of this in victory. Amen? Amen. Check this out. The king and all of his political buddies were standing around, looking and waiting for these men to perish, waiting for them to burn up, expecting nothing but ashes. And there will be some out there waiting to see you like this. Know this, the haters are going to hate, so let them hate. They will be sitting by, looking at you, trying to see how you're going to handle all this mess that's come our way. But I dare all of you today, all of you who are here today, all of you who are streaming today, in person or streaming, praise God through it. Amen. Can you do it? Put on some worship music and praise God no matter what we're going through. Amen. You keep trusting God while you're in the midst of this fire. You keep praising God through the fire. You keep reading your word through the fire. You keep going to church through the fire. You keep on giving, giving through the fire. You keep on tithing through the fire. And you keep on worshiping through the fire. Amen. Watch and see God will show you that we are victorious in the fire. The king said, didn't we put three? But I see four. And the fourth one looks like the son of God, Jesus. Wait a minute. He didn't just acknowledge who was in the fire, did he? The king didn't want to acknowledge their God, but he sure knew what he looked like. Saints. Saints. I say saints because that's who we are if we are sons and daughters of the Most High. Keep serving God. There are many that don't want to acknowledge our God, but they will know that what his blessings are going to look like, and they will know what his miracles look like. When we, he realized what was happening, the king called him by name. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High, come here. 
Many might, may not want to acknowledge this now, but when they see God deliver us out of this fiery furnace, they will call us by name. I said, they will call us by name when we are coming through. They will call us, you servants of the Most High, come here. I need you. You probably have many friends out there that don't believe in what you believe in. Don't believe in God. Believe in other things. But one day, watching us, watching you, how you carry yourself through this storm, through this fire, they will say, I need you. I need you to pray for me. I need you to lay hands on me. I need you to show me how to believe in your God. And the next part of the text says that when they came out of the fire, the men looked them over. Their clothes hadn't even been burned. Not even a hair on their head were singed. And the Bible says that their clothes didn't even smell like smoke. I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through. Or maybe I do. <laughs> Church, the fire isn't meant to hurt you. It's meant to purify you, yeah. to cleanse you, yeah. to refine you, to look more like God, to look more like himself. Now, I understand why Isaiah 48 10 says, Behold, I have refined you, but not like silver. I have tried you in the furnace of affliction. Now I understand why James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet various trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And Isaiah 43, 2 says, When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up, and the flames will not consume you. The flames will not consume you. And David said in Psalms 23, Though I walk through the valley of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Many are fearing today because of what happened in this election, because of what's going on today, because of the pandemic, because of this COVID, because of the disease, because we're going to get sick. Many are fearing today, but I'm here to tell you that God is with you. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, God is with you. Amen? Amen. Watch this. God didn't deliver them from the fiery furnace. He delivered them in the fiery furnace. You see, we've got to go through it. Maybe we pray to, to, ask, you know, to, to get out of it, not to, to not go in it. But we need to go in it sometimes. We need to go in it so we can be refined. My brothers and sisters, when you find yourself in the midst of the fire and when you're going through and the enemy tries to tear you down, I want to encourage you to do what they taught us to do as kids when you find yourself on fire. You've got to stop, drop, and roll. How many have heard that? Stop, drop, and roll. Have you guys heard that? Stop right where you're at. Drop down on your knees. Start praying. Start praising. Start worshiping. And roll your cares over to the Lord. Yeah. And leave them there. Stop, drop, and roll. Because we trust God. It doesn't matter who you voted for. I still love all of you. You know who I voted for? I voted for Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I voted for Jesus. And I win. <laughs> And because of that, I win, and you too can win. We have the victory because God gave us the victory. We had the victory a long time ago. It was on the cross, and through the blood of Jesus Christ, we have the victory. Amen? Amen. We have to remember that today. All of you who are watching, I wish you would type in your comments right now. We have victory. We have victory in Christ Jesus. All of you today should be yelling it out. We have victory in Christ Jesus. We have victory in Christ Jesus. Amen. We fear nothing. We don't need to fear. We know there's going to be a fire. Maybe your fire is going to be different than mine. But we go through the fire because we know what? God is with us. He is always with us. Let's see our communion ready.
I usually have this ready ahead of time because I know this plastic is hard, but this time I didn't. And oh my gosh. I'm praying for you all today. I'm going through the fire, and like you are. And uh, come on, let's go. Okay, can I try another one? You know, we have a God who loves us more than we could ever understand. Many of us here probably think, well, you don't know what I've done. You don't know how bad I've been. You don't know how much I've failed this last year. You don't know how much i failed this morning when I got up. But God loves you unconditionally. Amen. He loves you. Maybe you're going through a, a fire. Maybe you're going through a spark that's just starting. Maybe you're at the end of your fire. But God is refining you. God wants you to look like him. We're created in his likeness. Maybe some of us wandered off and started to distort. <laughs> and he wants to bring us back to looking like him. I'm here to tell you today that at this time when we come before God, Jesus commanded us to do this in remembrance of him, that we remember the sacrifice that he made for us. Remember that he loves you unconditionally. Remember that whatever you give to him today, whatever is on your heart, he's going to forgive you. That's the bottom line. He doesn't think about it. He doesn't say, well, that one's a little, hmm. No, he just forgives. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Some of you are hurting here today. Some of you that are screaming with us today are hurting there while you're at home. Unload this baggage that you've been carrying for so long. Just ask God to forgive you. He'll forgive. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let's take bread. And the cup. Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us where we can come to you and know that you are a forgiving, merciful, graceful God. There is no God like you. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're in our lives. We thank you that you made us your children. We thank you that no matter what's happening in this next year, Lord, that you're going to be in it. And you're going to take care of it. Many will have to answer to you, God. It says that in those days that many will have to bow down before you, whether we believe or do not believe, Lord, and you're going to take care of this. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. That's what you say. We don't need to argue. We don't need to debate. We can be upset, but we give it all to you, dear God, today. We leave it here with you. We love you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone.